So one of the most common questions that I get asked through my website is how do you make a sequence in Photoshop? So I'm just going to run through a quick tutorial here with a few hints and tips on how I like to do things. I'm going to start things off in Bridge CS4 here, but for those of you using Lightroom and Aperture and other programs like that, things should be fairly similar. So the first little thing I'm going to show you is a little tip to keep things nice and tidy. Here we have uh, the 21 photos from our sequence. If I shift and click to select all the photos, I can then go and right click on any one of them and move the arrow down to where it says stack and then click group as stack. You'll see the 21 photos now go all into one little pile so you can keep all your separate sequences all in these little stacks and it just takes up a lot less room in the window and easier to keep things organized. Once it's time to start working on the photos, you can just right click on the stack and then go down to stack again and ungroup from stack and that will fan out all the photos from that sequence. So now I'm going to just select the first 10 to speed things up a little bit so right click and open in camera raw and that will export all these photos to the processing program. Once you have all the photos opened up in camera raw you'll see their thumbnails all down the left hand side. The next little tip that I have is to click on the select all button that's just above the thumbnails and then go down and click on the synchronize button just below it. You then have the option of choosing which settings for the photos are synchronized but for our purpose we'll just leave all of them selected and click OK. Once you've done this you'll notice that any adjustments you make in the camera raw panel on the right hand side will be duplicated on the left hand side in all the thumbnails so the same settings are applied to each photo. This is useful because you're going to be cutting and pasting various sections of the different photos on top of each other so this way you'll make sure that all of the elements you cut out look exactly the same as the background layer that you're pasting them to. Normally at this point you'd select the files that you want to process and click open images to open them in Photoshop. To save a little bit of time though, I've already got three of them open there, so I'm just going to click cancel. Now that we have all the photos opened up in Photoshop, we will start with the first frame in the sequence. This is a sequence of Jossie Wells from Snow Park in New Zealand. As this is the background layer for the sequence, we don't need to do too much, but what I am going to do is move over to the layers palette on the right hand side and double click where it says background. It's going to prompt me for a new name for the layer and I'll just leave it as layer 0, that's the default. But now with the layer unlocked it will allow us to make any changes we need to later on. Next we're going to turn our attention to the second frame of the sequence then which I will just open up here. Holding down the command key and dragging over in the navigator window I can zoom in closely on the area of the photo that we need to work on. In order to select the part of the photo that we need to remove to add to the background layer, I like to use the quick mask mode. And the button's down here on the left hand side of the screen. You can see it there right at the bottom. If we click this button then we will enter quick mask mode. Then you just need to grab yourself the paintbrush from the toolbar and check that the opacity and flow for the paintbrush are set to 100%. Now you need to select what size of paintbrush you need. I'm going to select something pretty big, 57 pixels, that sounds about right. And then just go ahead and paint right over the section that you wish to cut out. Make sure you include the shadows in there as well. When the paintbrush is set to black in quick mask mode, you'll see the area that you're selecting turning red. If you select a little too much, just change the paintbrush color to white and you can erase anything you've already done. The next little tip that I have then is a useful one for helping you to arrange all of the frames of the sequence in exactly the right spot. By selecting part of an object in the back of the frame that doesn't move, you'll give yourself a point of reference to position each of the frames. I'm just going to select a little part of this snow cannon in the background here, and the usefulness of this will become a little more obvious in a minute. Once you've done this, go back and click on Exit Quick Mask Mode, and you'll see the marching ants line around the area that you've selected. Now, actually, by painting in red, what you've done here is select everything but that area. 
So we need to make a small adjustment here, which you can do by moving up to the select option on the menu bar at the top, clicking on that, and then moving down to inverse. Now you will just have the skier, and in this case part of the snow cannon selected. So by using Command and C to copy, we can take this back to our first layer and use Command V to paste this into the right spot. Now we need to make a few finer adjustments to make sure that it's in exactly the right place. So a little tip here, just head over to the layers palette on the right hand side. If I zoom in here you can see the opacity slider which is currently on 100%. But if we drop that down to about 50%, it'll make it a lot easier for us to position this new frame in the right place. Now, I'm just going to zoom in a little closer here and you can see what I mean. By selecting that part of the snow cannon now, we have a reference point with which to position the skier so we can make sure that they're all spaced accurately. Once you're satisfied that that's in the right place, you can go ahead and bump that right back up to 100% opacity and things will start to be looking pretty good. The next thing we need to do though is make a few finer adjustments. If we zoom in on these two frames here you can see that they're slightly overlapping where the two skis are joining. To solve this I'm going to come back over to the layers palette you can see the button add layer mask and what the layer mask allows you to do is just hide and reveal certain sections of the layers that you've pasted on top of each other. So to do this, make sure you have the layer mask selected, grab a paintbrush, I'm going to need something a little smaller, maybe even smaller than that actually. And when you paint on top of the layer mask with the paintbrush color set to black, you will conceal anything that you paint over from that layer. So it'll start to reveal things from the layer beneath it, as you can see there. So here we go, we can just zoom in a little bit more. We can just start to bring back the skis and the shadow from the background layer like that. And now if we zoom out and take a little look at this you will see that things are starting to look much better than they were before. The beauty of the layer mask though is that when you're painting with the brushes on top of the layer mask, as long as you're just painting on the mask and not the layer, you're not deleting any of the information there, so you, you can always go back and make any adjustments. By hitting X on your keyboard, you'll switch the paintbrush color to white, and you can paint back on the layer mask to reveal anything that you've already covered up if you made a mistake. So now we've covered the basic method for cutting out and pasting new frames into your sequence. I'll just run through it one more time with the third frame in the sequence here. So we will zoom in on the next frame, enter quick mask mode down here on the left, grab a decent sized paintbrush, 56 there, paint quickly over the area that we need to select, being careful to include those shadows, grab a little piece of the snow cannon from the background as a reference point again, exit quick mask mode, and then you can Command Shift and I to inverse the selection. Command C to copy and Command V to paste onto the background layer again. Drop the opacity to 50%, slide it roughly into the right place, zoom in to get that perfect, make fine adjustments using the arrow keys on the keyboard, opacity back up to 100% again, select the layer in the layers palette, and add a layer mask to that one. Grab the paintbrush and set that to black again. We're going to need a smaller brush. Start to reveal things from the second layer this time by painting with the black on the layer mask on the third layer. We can just start to bring through the shadow and the skis that are overlapping there. Sometimes you might need to get in a little closer and get in there with a real small brush to make things perfect. So there we go. And that should start to be looking pretty good if we zoom out. Obviously this can be fairly time consuming on a long sequence, especially if things if things are overlapping, you'll need to do a lot of work with the layer mask to conceal parts of one layer and reveal parts of another layer. 
But if we just go over here, you can see what the finished result should look like.